Today is August 15th, 2015. Joining us on the porch are Jerry Millar and Tom Kammerer and local musician Michael Bolio. The best place for family. Yes, sir, kids. We are back from vacation. We've been gone for three weeks because of a lot of reasons. The main reason being because I've I've been kind of laid up. I wasn't in the hospital only for about 16 hours uh, was I in the hospital, but they released me after they, you know, said that I was alive and I was going to be okay. I was about three weeks ago. I was walking through um, through town in Oswego. I was walking down down the street in front of all the shops uh, near like where the commons are and just minding my own business looking for something to do it was a nice sunny day you know I was enjoying the sun I was by myself nobody around well I mean nobody I knew around and I was just kind of kicking and uh, out of out of nowhere at least for me out of nowhere I had an anvil drop right on my head and uh, and as I was trying to recover from this anvil I looked up and uh, that there were two folks on top of this building and it was uh t- you probably know already because they're here on the show but tom Cameron and uh and jerry millar were up on top of this building and i was conscious enough to not only remember that moment but but to say what is going on and they were just both laughing and then i had a net dropped on me and they towed me up to the top of the building and I, I was like, you've got the wrong dude. I don't even know who you are or what you're trying to do, but I know for sure that you've got the wrong dude because there's no, I've done nothing to have an anvil dropped on my head. And they took off running. And uh, as they were running, there was, there was construction happening on the buildings on either side of the building that they were on top of. So there was a lot of tools. And I just, I had just enough energy. If you can, if you can think about your favorite adventure thriller movie and there's the hero in that moment where you think he's done for how there's no way he's going to get out of this but matthew gets out of it and he takes this rake he finds a rake and he slides it across the rooftop where jerry steps on it and it and it flies up and smashes her in the face and she rolls her ankle on the on the rake and she falls over and and so now she's complaining about a broken ankle and i've got this big lump that's grown out of the top of my head that kind of looks like a it's like a fleshy carrot with a little hair on top just like boop right out of the top of my head where the anvil landed and i'm rolling around on the roof and jerry's rolling around on the roof and tom is you know teeing and teeing and the next thing i know he's got this massive stick of dynamite and I think, okay, yeah, Matthew's done. Like this is this, it can't get any worse. And I'm I'm gonna be done. And it was just then, just then, that in the distance, on the breeze off the lake, I could smell life. Through all of the construction and the tar on the roof, and the smoke and the sweat, I heard what I thought was an angel singing come to find out it was it was Michael Bolio but he he was there and he was singing and I th- and I looked and there he was with the s- you know you you know the the image the the sunlight behind him highlighting his hair and and it was just it was glorious just reflecting perfectly off of the tuning pegs of his guitar and and everything was just everything was perfect and and Tom is is there and he's got his stick of dynamite and the little sparks are flying off the end and 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 it had rained just a couple of days before, but you know in those old roofs, there's those little pockets, and there was still a little bit of water there, and I just I just slightly, like, just reached out, and I got my hand wet, and I was able to reach up and, you know, put the dynamite out at just long enough for me to crawl to the edge of the of the building where the rope was still there with the, from the net that they had dropped on me and pulled me up to the top of the building with, and I, and I just, for safety's sake I took the rake with me just in case and I fall into the net and I start to lower myself down to the to the beautiful music of of Michael Bolio and come to find out everybody then realized during those 16 hours that I spent in the hospital that that it was all just a big misunderstanding which I tried to explain but nobody understands you when you've had an anvil dropped on your head 
So they didn't they didn't realize that what I was saying was not but uh, demon and uh they it was it was you know I'm I'm not who you think I am. But they didn't know. And so they came to visit and they brought me chocolate and uh they told me about this really cool thing that they're hosting called Porch Fest and I said, "Wait a minute. No. I I host on the Porch Radio." And they were like, "No, this is Porch Fest. It's different." And I was like, "But we do have a music festival at the farm, but it's not uh, it's not on the sp- on the po- on the porch, it's Wooden Apple Farmstead, and there was a lot of more miscommunication. Um, but then I just I slowly reached under the hospital bed and pulled out the rake, and they said, "Okay, we're good, we're good. You know, we don't have to, we don't, we don't want any trouble." And Michael came in and he sang, and it, everything was lovely. So now that I've recovered, I'm back home, I'm back on my feet, I'm able to stand and talking to a microphone, and so I've invited the three of them back to the show, and I'm so glad that they're here. Yes, yes. So you'll get to hear more from them later, and that's enough from me. So for now, Michael, you're on the porch. Thank you for inviting me. I I hear people talking all the time about how they love their Savior. And then tell us how they hate the guy next door. I hear stories told of people praising in their churches, and then going back to how they lived before. What this world needs is a little more G.O.D. The answer seems so obvious to me. I've got to live what we believe Wear our faith out on our sleeve A little more of you, God, less of me Ought to change the world we live in And though we strive to do what's right Our works will shine God's holy light Just think of all we can achieve We just live what we There's nothing that I cannot do through Christ who strengthens me. There is no mountain that cannot be moved. It's not a mantra, no, it's more than just philosophy. Because I've witnessed just what they can do. What this world needs is a little more G.R.D. The answer seems so obvious to me. We've got to live what we believe. Wear our faith out on our sleeve. A little more of you, God, less of me. Ought to change the world we live in. And if we strive to do what's right, our works will shine God's holy light. Just think of all we can achieve. We just live what we believe. We just live what we believe. We just live what we believe. And now, a word from our sponsor. Not only did the world's earliest civilizations build the foundation of today's societies, they built the foundations of some of the most famous and oldest structures still standing in the world, out of brick. Brick started as sun-dried blocks of soil and have evolved into fire and kiln-dried cornerstones of our most wonderful skyscrapers today. When I first learned about the influence of bricks, I couldn't believe how much they've done for the world. And then it hit me like a ton of our sponsor, which, incidentally, has anywhere from 350 to 600 bricks in one ton. Can you imagine getting hit? 
by 350 to 600 bricks. It's better than an anvil. Even one, really, would be enough for me. But did you know that one brick weighs an average of three to seven pounds? But I digress. Here on On the Porch Radio Hour, we build relationships. We build community. We build futures. And we can't do that without sponsors like those of today's show. Let's give a big round of applause for Bricks, everybody. I first heard about Porch Fest during the winter, mm -hmm. I think it was. I was very intrigued and very excited to have a conversation with Jerry. And I'm really excited now to have Jerry Millar. Why don't you just say Tom and Jerry? Yeah, I was trying to avoid that. Okay. Uh, okay, <laughs> but I can. So anyway, I'm really excited to have Tom and Jerry on the show. I mean, nobody can claim that they've had Tom and Jerry on their show. I'm sure somebody can, but I'm glad to be able to do that. Uh, so um, I, I have to start out with um, how did the concept of Porch Fest find its way to us? We go. Well, we uh, we were in Ithaca a couple of years ago, and we it must have been a drab, dreary day. Dra day, excuse me. All right, gonna do that over again. Um, and we were in a, a science museum, and we were c conversing with some people, and they asked if we were going to Porch Fest in Ithaca. And of course, we didn't know anything and about said, it. What's that? Yeah, we said, "What is that?" So we went, and that's where we discovered it. And we thought this could be in Oswego because it's it's a neighborhood type thing. That's right. It was really, it was cool. We really enjoyed it. That's really exciting. So and we've gone to them since then. Yep. Yeah. So you you've been attending this porch fest in Ithaca, and you come back to Oswego, mm -hmm. and then who did you talk to? How did you? Well, um, the neighborhood that we live in, we're in the historic uh, Franklin district, mm -hmm. and uh, the Renaissance Association is yes. th one of the people that are in charge of that is in our neighborhood and uh, Paul Stewart who mm -hmm. is a professor up at the college and he I mentioned it to him he goes Jerry that would be great if you could bring that to Oswego because we have a nice neighborhood we have beautiful porches so I said ah, I don't know I'll think about it I didn't know if I wanted <laughs> to get involved in it so I didn't do anything the first year we went back the second year to Porch Fest in Ithaca and Tom and I we looked at how they were managing things we took pictures of what they were doing and how it all worked so when I came back after that outing I talked to Paul and he said do it so so you're doing it so we're doing it good for you mm -hmm. that's exciting yeah it was it is <laughs> so how long have you been working on it then we had our first meeting in October of last year okay um, just a group of us in the neighborhood just to talk about it see what we would do with it if it would work and then every month after that we just had get-togethers and things just kind of fell in place That's we had, we had really people awesome. that said well I'll do a, uh, the web page I s had Tom help me with all of that and yeah we did Google Forms mm -hmm. for yep. sign-ups for hosts okay. as well as performers right wow. right okay so I mean you you got right to it very mm -hmm like professional and got everybody gathered and so by the time porch fest happens which will be in september is that Correct. right september the 20th 20th mm -hmm. okay it's a sunday okay so sunday september 20th and you will have then been planning and preparing for almost a full year correct for porch fest yep that is yep. fantastic now how many porches do you have involved right uh right now we have 19 porches um wow. and we have no, I'm sorry, excuse me. We have 17 porches, we have okay. 19 acts, but we, uh, we'll hope to have a few more acts. People haven't signed up yet that we are hoping that they will. Yeah, we're hoping also. another half so. dozen mm -hmm. anyway. That'll and I think for the first year, that's a, a good chunk. Mm -hmm. And um, it's in a, a square area, West 3rd to West 7th, and from Bridge to Van Buren Street, so it's right. a nice square. It encompasses two parks. Nice. So it's a nice area for people to walk around and family time. Right. And I'm, I'm, I'm remembering right now that I learned a really important piece from an NPR in interview that I listened to. Mm -hmm. And that is that you ha when you're doing radio, you have to make sure that you're spelling everything out for people. And so what is Porch Fest? 
I totally skipped that part. Okay. Um, I'm not doing my job. Porch Fest is um, an idea that you have a community neighborhood come together and invite m musicians or performers of some nature to come into the neighborhood right. on their porches to play for the local community. And you just invite people to come. It's a chance for entertainment for the neighborhood and also to have local people, performers, to show what they are and show what they're all about. Advertising, free advertising. Right. Everything's free. Yeah. Everything's free. Everything is mm -hmm. free. So mm -hmm. you can just show up and watch people perform on people's porches. There will be uh, maps. Yes. That will show you who's... They'll be online and also paper maps. Uh, they'll show all the neighborhood, all the houses that are involved and who's playing at what time. Do you feel like finding musicians for Porch Fest... Uh, well, let me, actually, let me back up uh, because I know there's musicians, but I know there's at least one non-musician. So, what is the um, what is the breakdown? Is it, it's mostly musicians mm -hmm. that are going to be on the porch, correct, or people's porches, right? Uh, and there is there's one person I know of that is, is not a musician. Is there anybody else that um, that would be Jim? Mm -hmm. He's reading poetry. Um, not as of this time. We were hoping okay. to have some people to do storytelling for children or perhaps the college because they're really not involved yet because they were already out of session by the time things were rolling. Right. Um, maybe they would, they have a drama club. They might want to do some drama or mm -hmm. right. something right. like a that. I don't know. Something that's coming up to mm -hmm. showcase okay. it. Yeah. All right. Are you considering yourselves part of the selection committee then for the performers? <laughs> a mm, committee. I guess. Okay. Um, <laughs> Excellent. Well, stick around for the rest that. of the show because <laughs> you might end up with a storyteller. Very good. Yeah, we'll have to chat. Excellent. I do want to say, though, that uh, we apologize for that rather drastic method of getting your attention and <laughs> are very happy that you recovered yeah. fully. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a three-week plan. I think your plan worked well. You know, I had you just had to work in the recovery time, which I think you did great. And now right. we're all back together okay. on the show. Yeah. I have no idea what I was doing with that stick of TNT. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. No, I'm, I'm glad that sure. puddle was there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I am too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as I'm walking around Porch Fest, I don't have to worry about any, no, any surprises I like I wouldn't that, count right? It out. I'll, I'll be. <laughs> I wouldn't count it out. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Oh boy. So there's 19 performers. Correct. On 17 porches. Yes. What time does it start? One o'clock. One o'clock. And it goes till five o'clock. Awesome. So four hours I can mm -hmm. just, well, not for four hours for me, but for four hours for other people, they can just like walk around and yes. watch right. in people's front yards and, right. you yep. know, carry a chair or something or a carry blanket. Carry a chair. Right. I know there's one uh, house that said they're, they're going to cook hot dogs. And what? offer them for free for people. That's fantastic. And I'm sure people will have drinks on their own property. Right. You know, sodas or right, right, whatever. The, the open container thing is in effect. Right. So yeah. This is right. Family, low key, kind of, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. kind of fun. Cool. Cool. And is is most of the music? Uh, is it acoustic? Is it bands? Is it you know? You can address that, Eric. Yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a pretty good mix mm -hmm. at this point. A lot of acoustic. There's a couple, three um, electric bands, but they're going to be playing kind of a, uh, a stripped-down version. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're hoping to get Alpine horns. Oh, that's true. Oh, yes, yeah. so they're not signed up yet. Not yet. That could happen. My... Um my coworker um, just started playing Alpine horn, mm -hmm. and of course, I don't know if anybody's familiar with those, but they're very long. You know, Ricola. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that would be very um, unique. Uh, you don't see those every day, so I'm really hoping that there's. It's a group of five people, so I'm hoping yeah. that they'll be able to do something. Cool. So in fine tradition, maybe we could move them up to the rooftops. Right. Instead of going from mountain to mountain, they could just go from rooftop to rooftop. I worry this about rooftops, but it's <laughs> so do I. It's possible. So do I. Yeah. Since we met, I've yeah. been very yeah. concerned about rooftops. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, okay. So it, it's free for everybody. Mm -hmm. So they just show up. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that I'm covering all of the information. Uh, once again, it's September 20th, which is a Sunday. Sunday. Correct. From 1 to 5. Yep. Correct. I can't think of any better way to spend a Sunday afternoon than walking around. It will be around. a beautiful afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, weather I've heard is going to be fantastic that day. 
We've got our it's order in already. Yeah. <laughs> it's rain or shine. There'll be a lot That's of cover right. for, the, for the performers. So. Right. right. Yeah. Right. That'll yeah, be perfect. a little rain. I mean, That's you right. know, maybe snow. <sighs> yeah. You're right. You That's right. Know. That's right. And um, remind me of, well, yeah, remind me of the, the neighborhood again. So the streets. West 3rd mm -hmm. to West 7th from Bridge to Van Buren. Okay. So and it's, it's a square area. Right. And on Bridge Street, there's not performers, no. right? No, no. It's all, actually, it's basically from Cayuga. We don't have anybody south of Cayuga, west Cayuga. So okay. it's really Cayuga to Van Buren, 3rd to 7th. And cool. 16 square blocks, I guess. Yeah. It turns out to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. 16 mm -hmm. square blocks of music on a Sunday afternoon. And we should note, yes. too, that all of the performers, most of them, if not all of them, are professional, and they are <laughs> donating their time. They're just... You know, wanting to have a good time just as well as the people that are going to come to view them. Yeah. Right. So we're excited about that. And we have people coming from um, Binghamton. Okay. The Shambles. They're mm -hmm. a, a Celtic band. And we have uh, one person that's coming from Rochester. That's fantastic. Mm, I think most everybody else is local. Sure. That's great. It's great. It's, local we're, music. We're very pleased. Yeah. Yeah, that's Mike Joseph, right, mm -hmm. from Rochester. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Man, all local, all good stuff. So make sure that you're checking this out. Now, you have a website. Correct. And you're on Facebook. Correct. Okay, what is the website address? It's oswegoporchfest.com. Perfect, oswegoporchfest.com. And sure. they can find Oswego Porch Fest on Facebook? Facebook. Is that how they would search? Correct. Okay. Yep. So yep. oswegoporchfest.com, Oswego Porch Fest on Facebook. Check it out. Go on September 20th yes. in Oswego. You're going to have a great time. One to five. This is good stuff. Thank you so much Thanks for, for being on the, on the porch. I Thank think you. it's really great that you went from Porch Fest on the porch, by the way. I had to make that uh, I, reference. Right. That's beautiful. Thank you, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good. This is the point of the show where I usually say, <clears throat> you're listening to On the Porch Radio Hour. We'll be back in a moment. But we're not. We're not going to be back in a moment because I'm not done yet. The next two shows, that's Thursday, August 20th, live, or the 22nd of, on a Saturday, you can listen to it archived, or live here at the Wooden Apple Farmstead, August 27th, which is also a Thursday. It's a very special day. Or you can listen to the show which won't be nearly as fun but we'll get there so next the next show august 20th here at the farm we're going to have a young woman by the name of sabrina and sabrina sabrina and gina which i really like how that sounds by the way oh what she's gina's nodding her head no she wants it to be gina and sabrina we'll figure it out we'll figure it out but anyway the inas are going to be spending almost the whole show singing Broadway tunes. It's going to be fantastic. So you'll hear me a little bit, but there will be an interview with Sabrina, and there's going to be a lot of Broadway music, which is going to be awesome. So you'll want to come check that out. If your schedule doesn't allow, sorry, Sabrina, but if you have to choose between one of those two shows, either the 20th or the 27th, is it the 20th? It's, it's the 20th, right? Or the 27th? You want to come on the 27th. Because that's my birthday. It's a Thursday. My birthday is August 27th. We're having a show on my birthday. It is so important. And we're expecting so many fantastic people to come celebrate with me on the porch that we're moving out of the kitchen into the barn. Yeah, there's going to be spotlights. There's going to be sound equipment. Okay, it's still going to be the same as, as the kitchen, but we're going to be in the barn. There, there might be animals. And you may not be able to participate with me, but you'll be able to participate in all sorts of other ways. But there will be a wine tasting on the air. So we're going to have a professional who's bringing wine from a local winery, Ashley Lynn Winery, and he's coming and he's going to do some wine tasting with me. And I'm going to be able to give feedback. It's going to be fantastic. There's going to be a ton of people in the crowd, including you. 
and you're going to come celebrate my birthday. I'm trying to work out some really tasty snacks. So if you want to come and you want to bring really tasty snacks, bring a lot plus one so that I can have one of those really tasty snacks while I'm on the air. Usually I stand for the show too, but I might be in a rocking chair. Now's the time for me to say what I was going to say earlier, but be at Wooden Apple Farmstead. Find me on Facebook. Find On the Porch Radio Hour on Facebook. My name's Matthew Wood. We're going to have my birthday on the Porch Radio Hour, August 27th. I'll see you here. And now, <clears throat> you're listening to On the Porch Radio Hour. We'll be back in a moment. What's happening in central New York is brought to us by I Heart Oswego. Oswego State Downtown hosts People, Places, and Things, featuring the photos of Leah Cooperman, a National and Regional Scholastic Art Awards honoree. The exhibit is open noon to 5 p.m., Wednesdays to Saturdays. Call 315-216-4985 for more information. Theatre Du Jour presents Bingo, the winning musical, at the Ice House in Mexico on August 20th and at the Oswego Tea Company on August 21st. Visit DuJourCNY.com for more information. The Super Summer Free Concert Series continues August 21st at Lighthouse Lanes in Oswego with music from Under the Gun. Visit LHLanes.com for more information. The Port City Co-op hosts an outdoor flea market at West Bridge and 2nd Streets in Oswego on the first and third Sundays of each month from 12 to 5 p.m. Call 315-529-5177 for more information. The CNY Arts Center's production of Much Ado About Nothing closes this weekend. The Arts Center hosts a Writer's Cafe the last Sunday of the month with the next session August 30th at 6 p.m. The Arts Center also offers adult painting classes and writing classes and is currently hosting Artie Camp for children. Artie Camp offers a variety of classes in visual and performing arts to school-aged children. Visit cnyartcenter.com for more information. Oswego County Farmers Markets happen just about every day of the week. In Central Square, visit Crossroads Park Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. until dark. New Haven's Farmers Market is held at the Town Hall on Mondays from 4 until 7. Lacona's Farmers Market is at the corner of Maple Avenue and Harwood Drive on Thursdays from 4 until 7. Oswego's Farmers Market is also on Thursdays from 4.30 until 8.30 and is held on West 1st Street between Bridge and Oneida Streets. Pulaski hosts a market in South Park on Fridays from 4 until 8. The Canal View parking lot in Fulton is the home of the Fulton Farmer's Market on Saturdays from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. And Parrish also hosts a market on Saturdays from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. at the corner of Route 69 and Route 69A. The Red Room Sessions at the Wooden Apple Farmstead are a time for songwriters, musicians, and anyone else who wants to build their musical skill and knowledge to get together. We share songs we are working on, bounce musical ideas off each other, and we usually have time to just play a little music. This is a supportive environment where all levels of songwriting and musical experience are welcome. The next session is August 30th at 6 p.m. Wooden Apple Farmstead also hosts the third annual Music and Arts Festival on September 5th and 6th. The festival will include a frisbee golf tournament on Saturday, a songwriters contest on Saturday evening, and a full day of live music on Sunday. Art will be for sale throughout the weekend. For more information about the event or to find out how to become a sponsor, contestant, or vendor, visit Wooden Apple Farmstead on Facebook or call 315 315- Five nine one zero seven one one. At the age of eight, Michael Bolio first pick, picked up a guitar, and his dad taught him his first three chords, and he's been playing ever since. Welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, no problem. So <laughs> you were eight. You yeah. picked up a guitar. I decided I wanted to learn to play guitar, and I asked my dad to teach me. That is cool. And so you guys sat down and. Away you went. He taught me my first three chords, and that was he figured I'd lose interest in it and put it right, down. And right, I just got more interested and just kept right on learning. That's the way to do it. That's really fantastic. Uh, sometimes we've when we have people on the on the show, or I'm talking to other musicians at festivals or at other shows, and they've had that similar experience where they picked up a guitar at eight years old, they played with their dad. Uh, there's been the experience where 
they've I, and so i always say man so you've been playing ever since then and they're like well you know i took a couple years off for this reason or for that reason and i'm wondering if you've had that experience no that's no awesome. i've been playing music pretty much all, all the time they at least a few hours a day right since i was eight years old wow that's really fantastic good for you thank you yeah <coughs> uh and so then i know this isn't exactly why you're here but uh you then decided at some point in your life that you wanted to be in musical productions as well. Yes. Um, that was about the seventh grade. Okay. Seventh grade in school. So not a lot after you picked uh, up your guitar. No. Man, so your dad played the guitar. Mm-hmm. Were you surrounded by music a lot then? Um, yeah, pretty much. My uncle played drums. My dad played guitar. Um, by the time I was 14, I had a garage band. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of morph from there, just kept right on going. Yeah, that's really neat. And so, do you are you able to find ways then to share that with other people and and to surround other people with your music? Oh, always. Um, actually, I lead on the lead vocals in a Christian rock band called The Sent Forth, um, and we lead worship every Friday night at Port Byron, okay, Federated Church of Port Byron at seven o'clock. Nice. And um, we play our material mm-hmm. sometimes we, we do a lot of cover work mostly for worship sure but uh when we play in concert um just about everything we play is is our is our material or mu- music that i've written over the years okay that was gonna be my next question so you do a lot of the writing yourself i, I do almost all of it all right do you find ways to um to take your original music or, or even your covers and like do you attend open mics or do you do anything like that um no we don't have to do a lot of time to do that because mm-hmm. we're spending a lot of time in churches other th- we travel to other churches as well for christian festivals well we just played in nedro at uh, nedro fest and this coming the 22nd uh, mm-hmm. that you brought up we'll be playing at uh, project restore in geneva oh nice wow okay so you're busy uh very that's great and and a lot of it is music it, all, just about all of it is music. Fantastic. So when when you're not playing your guitar and you're not singing and you're not traveling and, and doing all of your music, what what do you do? Um, I'm a, I'm employed part time at a butcher shop in Syracuse. Oh, neat. <laughs> That's really neat. I retired from the Department of Corrections after 27 years of service. Okay. And I got bored sitting in my living room watching television, so yeah. I decided that it would be a good idea to find a part time job. Mm-hmm. Did you have any experience as a butcher None. before that? None. Oh, They're teaching neat. me everything. Actually, we make all our own sausage. Mm-hmm. Uh, we make all we make all our own deli meats. We make right there in the store. That's neat. Good for you. So you're keeping yourself busy, finding really cool things to do. It, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. It's yeah, absolutely. Time. So if if I go online and I want to find your music or I want to listen to you, do can I do that? Absolutely. Um, sentforth.com. Okay. Um, is, is the band's website, and we have a channel on YouTube that you can find. It's type, it's type in "The Sent Forth." Okay. And it should take you right to it. Um, or you can go to cdbaby.com dot com, mm-hmm. and where you can buy our first CD. All right. Okay. So you're doing a great job of leading this interview. I'm really enjoying this. So uh, it makes it real easy. You have one CD. One we, have one, we have one that we've completed that's available that's mm-hmm. available on CD Baby, and there's one that we've just finished that we're doing a little post, a little more post work on. Okay. Post production work. Yeah, so that won't be too long before uh, that's out. Hopefully by the first of the year. Yeah. Fantastic. How many songs are on your first album? On the new, on the first album, there's ten. Okay. Um, all of all of them I wrote. Nice. Um, the second album, there's twelve of them, and I wrote eleven. Wow. Wow. Good for you. So you're, you're, you're getting a lot done. Uh, staying busy. Yeah. How many people are in the band? Three of us. Okay. There's three of us. Actually, we just, our uh, our original drummer, Robbie Brown, uh, decided, retired and decided that he wanted to move down to Georgia. So we we played without a drummer for a while, and we've just um, hired this young man by the name of Michael Smith out of Syracuse, who's going to start playing drums with us on a regular basis. So All we're right. back to being a three-piece power trio again. Yeah. That'll be neat. So it's uh, guitar, bass, and drums, is that? Yep. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, now, did you grow up in in the area? No, I gr- actually I grew up in Watertown, New York. Okay, way up north. Okay, yeah. So yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, and and being in corrections and and doing other things brought you down to this area. Actually, yeah. What brought me to the Fulton area? I lived I live in Fulton. What brought me there was um 
I was working at University Hospital and on, on a secure unit for inmates there. And I was getting tired of driving from Watertown to Syracuse every oh, day. yeah, sure. And we got a really great deal on this house, and we moved. Fantastic. So anyway, I'm sure that I will have more questions for you after, but I it's probably a good time for me to hear some music. Do you have another song for I us? I would love to do another song for you. That would be great. Thank you, Michael. Not a problem at all. Life was filled with guns and war And all of us got trampled on the floor And I wish we'd all been ready The children died, the days grew cold A piece of bread would buy a bag of gold And I wish we'd all been ready there's no time to change your mind The sun has come and you've been left behind A man and wife sleep in bed She hears a noise, she turns her head, he's gone Hill. One disappears, and one's left standing still. And I wish we'd all been ready. There's no time to change your mind. The sun has come, and you've been left behind. wondering if you would be willing to share some of the inspiration for that song. Actually, that song was written by a gentleman by the name of Larry Norman um, back in the early 70s. Okay. Larry was a relatively, actually Larry played guitar in a relatively popular top 40 band at that point in time. And as top 40 musicians go, so did Larry, the drugs and all the over, overall indulgences. He, um, <clears throat> one night accidentally overdosed himself on cocaine and he was laying in a hospital and a friend of his showed up at, the, at his hospital bed with a bible and dropped it on his chest said Larry you got to read this book man it'll change your life and that's exactly what he did He's, he um, he opened it up started reading the bible and before he relate, before he left the hospital he gave his life to Christ and started attending church services and when he did the music that he was hearing in the churches really didn't speak to his heart. I mean, young man, playing a lot of rock and roll music, he was, really wasn't into the whole organ thing. Right. Um, so Larry took it upon himself to start 
um, writing songs that he felt would reach people his age mm -hmm. um, with stories about Christ. That particular, this particular song comes out of the book of Revelations. Um, but Larry um, kind of paved the way for me and all the re relatively popular Christian bands that are out there. He kind of broke the door down and created contemporary Christian music. So. Neat. Well, thank you for sharing that story and the song. That was really great. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to uh, I'm going to ask Gina to come up, and she's going to join you on one of your songs? One, it's one of ours. Actually, it's on the new CD, the one that we just finished. Oh, excellent. I was hoping we'd hear something from the new album. One more time for Michael and Gina. From that first cup of coffee in the morning Till I go to bed each night Lord, I want you in every thought and word spoken I want to do in your eyes what is right You know my heart, you know my whole life story And you know I want to know you more Oh Lord, let everything I do all for your glory All for your glory From each stranger that I meet on the sidewalk To the friends and family that I love Let how we teach them Be guided by your hand, Lord My life an example of your love You know my heart, you know my whole life story you know I want to know you more Oh Lord, let everything I do Be all for your glory All for your glory I want my life to be a shining example Of the work that you have done Each and every day let me be mindful of your teaching Till the returning of the sun You know my heart, you know my whole life story And you know I want to know you more Oh Lord, let everything I do Be all for your glory All for your glory Let it be all for your glory All for your glory I come back to you You're my resting place You're my traveling through I come back to you My whole world is new I come back to you Love is a story we tell A soaring bird well, the darkest night, the brightest day, the moment that you say I come back to you. You're my resting place, you're my traveling through. I come back to you, my whole world is new. I come back. Loudest chime, the softest ring, a frozen brook, a racing stream, the beauty that you bring back to me. You're my resting place, you're my traveling through. I come back to you, my whole world is new. I come back. Your soul's light in so many lifetimes, right? 
from our heart's creation. And wherever you go, the stars shine, the moon shadows, perfect illumination to get back to you. You're my resting place. You're my traveling through. I come back to you. My whole world is new. I come back to you. I come back to you. You're my resting place. You're my traveling through. I come back to you. My whole world is new. I come back to you. It's June 20th, 1997, when Louis Riel, who was named after one of his more famous Métis ancestors that was made famous from leading the Red River Rebellion, Louis was reading a 1995 publication of an ecological survey done of Walden Pond in Massachusetts. And he was reading all of these, you know, all of these graphs and all of these things that were pointing out the health or the not health of specific things in Walden Pond. So fish were counted, the health of fish were counted, the number of baby fish, the adult fish, all of these things, the, the plant life, the insect life, that pH, the acidity levels of the water, all of these things were laid out in this ecological survey of Walden Pond. And Louis sat in his living room thinking about this publication. And for the next two years, he was always coming back to this ecological survey. He spent a ton of time at Tonkahogan Lake. So after the, that two years, he decided he was going to do something about it. So he gathered a bunch of folks in the community and he built a committee and he led this committee into researching and finding a company to help them do an ecological survey on the lake in Tonkahogan. Nothing like this had ever been done in town and he wanted to know its health. He wanted to know what phenomenal things could be happening in their town. And he thought that maybe an ecological survey of the lake where their whole town had started, this lake, this legend that the whole town had been built on. And so they brought in this research team, all of these different types of scientists and biologists, and they started studying the lake. And for the next three months, they studied the lake through the changes. And the town was so curious, and, and, and it brought so many people from the town down because there were these giant black tubes along the edge of the lake that were filled with water, and they were constantly pumping water out of the lake into these tubes and then back out of the tubes into the lake. And they were out in the lake with nets, and they were in rowboats with headphones and microphones and sonars and underwater cameras, and you name it, and they had it. And they were, they were doing the whole thing. They were going from the lake shore out to the deepest parts, back to the shallowest parts, and they were scooping up things with tiny nets and counting them, and they had microscopes right there on the lake shore. They had vans, and they were sitting in their vans with all this scientific equipment, and the town was incredibly excited about any results that were going to come back. And it seemed like it took days and days for all of these scientists to set up all of this equipment and to get it ready. And like some crazy dream, the town woke up to everything being gone. There was not a sign, not even a footprint was left in the mud on the shoreline of the lake. And this was bizarre. This mystery. Everybody wanted to know what was going on and and so then one f person finally said in a coffee shop, well, you know, sometimes they just have to pack up and go, and we won't get the results for a long time. But it seemed to them like a long time had gone on, and people started calling Louie, wanting to know if he had heard the results. And all he'd ever said was, I've gotten the results. 
I knew the results before they ever left. And they know the results. And we talked about those results. And they'll never be published. And this really disturbed folks. Could they still swim the lake? Could they fish? Could they eat the fish out of the lake? Could they let their kids and their dogs play in the water? Could they spend picnics down there? What was going on? And all Louis could say was, you're safe. You're just as safe as you were before the scientists came. But the results just won't be published. They said, can't you tell us? And the answer was constantly no. And there were nights where you could be out walking the streets of Tonkahogan. And the only light you could see was the light coming from what Louis called his study, where everybody knew that he was reading Scientific American, and he was reading publications, and he was reading about surveys and notes and letters from environmental specialists, because this is what he did. And late, late at night, early, early in the morning, you could see the light. And it reminded people of what it might have been like before electricity ever happened, and somebody sitting at a desk with the lamp turned down low, just barely enough so that you could read it if you held it up and squinted. And that's where Louis sat. And so, one Halloween night, a group of teens got together, and they decided that they were going to make it look like they were going out trick-or-treating, but they were going to go and they were going to peek through the window and see what Louis was reading because they knew he'd be reading. And there they were, in the bushes, hanging out, looking through the window. And they could see Louis hunched over something at his desk with that light, that really low wattage yellow light. Almost like if you could illuminate something through cigarette stains is what it looked like all in this room. Everything was yellow, like an old western photograph of some famous cowboy faded around the edges of the window. And one, one of those kids said they caught a glimpse of something that looked like a photograph. And so they're all climbing on top of each other, trying to get on the windowsill, trying to get on each other's shoulders, and there it was, hunched over, Louis flipping through these little photographs. And one of them said that he got a good enough look that he could see that this was what Louis was doing night after night after night. And this is how the story began. That he wasn't reading Scientific American or other publications anymore. He was just looking at the same photographs over and over and over again. And the kids knew that this is what was happening because they could see them well enough that they could almost make out what was in the photograph. But not enough. It was a mystery. But in the reflection of the photographs from, from the lamp, you could see hundreds, maybe thousands of thumbprints on the photographs from where Louis was flipping through. And they were worn in those spots where he was always holding the pictures. So the stories began. They found something. They found something that they don't want to talk about. Or maybe... Maybe they didn't find anything. And Louis just flipping through those photographs because he wants there to be something. Because when you live in Tonka Hogan, you have to have something to live for. There has to be something. The people in this town are always looking for something. And so Louis just like the rest of us. And he brought those scientists here so that we could have something. But what was he looking for? What was he hoping to find? And like they do sometimes in Tonka Hogan, like with that Olympic swimmer that they brought from Africa to have him swim across the lake. They, they wanted hope. And so that night, that, the night before the, this man was going to swim across the lake and give a speech on the other side, they knew something was going on. And so what they always do in Tonka Hogan is they bring this young man into a bar and they start serving him drinks thinking that he'll talk. So that's what they did. They bring Louis in. And finally he had enough. Not enough alcohol. He'd only had two drinks. 
but he'd had enough of the questions. He'd have, an, he'd have enough of finding people peeking through his windows and these kids standing on their shoulders and, and, and trying to get on the windowsill to look at his, his photographs. And he knew. So he said, fine. If you want to know, this. And he reached inside his pocket and he pulled it out. And there was a gasp from everybody peeking over Louis's shoulder. Could it be? Could this fuzzy photograph really? Could it be the famous Tonka Hogan cat salmon? <laughs> Did they? They couldn't have. Did they get a photograph? Everybody knew that's what it had to be. There was this long, skinny strand coming off of this large, gaping mouth. It had to be a whisker. It had to be a whisker on the mouth of the cat salmon. So everybody bought Louie a drink and they left, and he never said a word. They just looked at the photo. So there he sat with three more drinks sitting in front of him. And somebody swears that they heard that when Louis got up after drinking his third drink, that he put on his coat, and they could have swore, they'll always swear that he was mumbling, I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing with it every night. And there Louis sits, sitting on the edge of the dock, just off the north end of the lake where he can sit on the right corner because the dock leans just enough and he rolls up the pant legs of his of his pants and he takes his socks and his shoes off and he just dangles his toes into the water and he holds that photo as if it's an index card and he's reading the lyrics and he sings but not in his voice but what he believes is the voice of the cat salmon. This is my home. This is my only home. This is the only sacred ground that I have ever known. Should I stray in the dark night alone? Rock me, goddess, in the gentle arms of Eden. Rock me, goddess, in the gentle arms of Eden. Every time I hear that applause, I realize we've made it to the end of another show. And I'm so glad you're here. It's sad times, but it'll only be a week until you get to hear more. And it will only be two weeks until you get to hear more at my birthday. So I'll see you here. I want to thank Tom and Jerry for being on the show. Yeah. I want to thank Michael for being here and singing his music and sharing all of that with us. Thank you so much. And thanks to everybody like Tom and Jerry and like Michael that are bringing people to them, that are creating community, that are creating spaces for people to come and enjoy everything that we have here. I want to thank everybody for listening on Concert Window. I want to thank for everybody. I want to thank everybody for going on to our website and listening to our archived shows because they're all there. Just click on the Watch and Listen tab. You'll enjoy it. And I want to thank everybody that comes to the Wooden Apple Farmstead with all of the things that we're doing, like our family camp and like our music festival. So I can't wait to see you again. And until then, peace to your journey. On the Porch is a production of the Wooden Apple Farmstead with host Matthew Wood. Our musical director is Gina Holsoppel. Our sound technician is Maxwell Wood. Our stage manager is Ray Monet. 
Special guests include Jerry Millar, Tom Kammerer, and Michael Bolio. Find information about past shows, being on the porch, and much more online at ontheporch.weebly.com.